Hello, I'm a program manager from the Microsoft Excel team. Um, I work on all things Calc. So the Calc engine, dynamic arrays is a feature I've been working on for a long time. Um, and it's a pretty big change for Excel. If you use formulas, we're going into a new world. Um, formulas in Excel are about to get a lot more powerful. Now, it's going to be a little noisy with the band next door. Um, so you may have to keep an eye on the, um, you still can't hear? Are we as loud as possible? Go for overdrive. Okay, we'll see. They've, they've cranked it up as loud as they can. Um, so let's jump into it. Okay, so today in Excel, you have, um, you can write a formula and you get one value returned. And that's how it's been for the last 35-ish years, right? One formula, one value. You could do something sneaky. You could resort to black magic and do control shift enter and get an array formula, but that was a real, it was a pain in the butt, right? Um, but things are changing. So right now you can return things like, let's see this works, numbers, text, booleans, errors, and recently we've added rich data types, so you can have stock in a cell, geography in a cell. But all these things are still single things. They're single entities. They're not an array, a collection of entities. Okay. So what we've done is we've taught the grid how to handle arrays natively. Now, this is done at a very low level. It's not done at a function level. It's done at a calc engine level. And we'll see how that permeates through Excel shortly. I'll show you some examples. But in this example here, we've got the name Mary. And if you wrote a formula today that returned Mary, or returned an array of names, it could only return one name. So you might get Mary in a cell. But with dynamic arrays, it'll spill down. And we call that spilling. We use the word spilling because we the, the formula really exists in that top left cell, and all the other cells are subordinate to it. That top cell, the anchor cell, is the important one. It's where the formula lives. The formula doesn't live anywhere else. OK. And to accompany this, we're, bre we're um, launching six fantastic new functions. We've got the filter function, a personal favorite, unique, sort, sort by, sequence, and rand array. The top three are really the hero functions. The other ones are building block functions. Um, things like sort by sequence and rand array are really great if you're building more complex formulas. OK, and I'm going to jump across into the demo now. We already want to give you a standing up. <laughs> <laughs> it's been fun playing with this stuff. OK, I've been working with it for a few years. Um, OK, so here we go. Wait, before I jump in, I should explain my data, right? Um, so we've got a little table over here. We've got some invoice numbers, some products, regions, all the states in the USA. We've got units, price, and revenue. And we want to do a little bit of analysis. So we're going to get all the unique products out of that list. So we go equals unique. And I'm going to, you'll see the unique function takes three arguments. Um, the, the base version just gets the unique by row, by row. You can also specify by column if you want. And then the final argument is if you want to do kind of the database version of, of unique, because this is, the, this is the database version of distinct by default, but that's what most people think of it as. So we, have, we support both. So I'm going to go give it the list of products, and I'm just going to hit Enter. And I'm going to talk about what happens here. Okay? So I hit Enter, and it's spilled. That formula returned four, four results, and because it returned four results, those results just spilled to the grid. Um, here's a little trick you can use in your day-to-day -day life, actually. So if I select the unique function in, in my formula bar, and this works in Excel in general, and you hit F9, it'll show you what that returns. So you can see this is our array notation. So it returns home automation hub, digital projector, charging station, and gaming console. So it returns an array. That's what the formula is returning. And then when I, I'm going to hit Escape so it doesn't damage my formula. But then when I hit Enter, that just spills. Now there are a few things about um, what you see on screen here. So you see this blue border. We use that to indicate a set. So we show that that's the array, that it's the grouping, um, that they're just, um, they're all related. And if you go outside of that, you'll see it disappears. So it's just an indication when you're in there that they're all grouped. And then if you look at the formula bar, you'll see that the formula in the top left cell is different to the formulas in the other cells. 
And that's to let you know that the formula is coming from the top left, and in the others, they're being driven by a formula, but there's really nothing there. So if I type now, if I type hello here, right, and I hit enter, there's nothing in that cell. The value in the cell is coming from the formula above. So if I hit enter, you'll see the formula is still there. The formula wants to go down. It can't, and it tells me that there's a spill error. And if I go and get rid of the obstacle by cutting or pasting it out, so I'm going to cut and paste it down here. Oh, sorry. Shortcut malfunction. It then just spills. So it'll never damage your data. It's not going to override anything. It'll just try and spill if it can, and if it can't, it'll roll up. Okay. So now we've got a little list. Next up, I'm going to show you a, a function that's been around forever, SUMIF, right? So SUMIF was launched way before dynamic arrays. And we'll watch the SUMIF function spill. So here I'm going to SUMIF, and I'm going to give it this range of products. And I'm going to give it the criteria. Initially, I'm just going to give it one, and I'll talk through what I'm doing next. And I'm going to sum up all the units. So this is going to give me the units of the home automation hub. And I can copy that down. That works great until my unique function redimensions. OK? Now my unique function has redimensioned as part of calc, but this formula to the right needs to be copied down again. So that's not very resilient. So what we've done is we've introduced a new notation in Excel. And you'll see that notation in a second. So if I select. I'm just going to select a few more of these. And because I'm selecting, um, if you're really interested in array formulas, come to my session tomorrow. We'll talk about all the array behaviors and what happens under the hood. But the sum if function is expecting one thing for that second argument. If I give it three things, what the calc engine says is, oh, you've call you're, calling it you're calling it with three things. So I'm going to call it three times and give you three results. So now it gives me three results. So that spills down. Right, And if I extend it the whole way, you'll see that it now comes up with this new reference, H9 pound. That's a spill ref. And what that tells you, what that tells Excel to do is get the entire spill range from H9. Okay? And that means as that redimensions, that reference is going to change. So you see how it spills? If I get rid of this VR headset, that's the only item in the list. So I'm just going to copy this over the top you'll see how the units changed in, changed in unison with the unique. So now I've got the spreadsheet that's dimensioning itself. It's changing according to the data that I'm putting into it, which is magical, honestly. So now... <laughs> there was, um, when we launched this, there was a, one of my favorite comments was on, um, on Reddit. Someone said it made them feel like an evil wizard. I was like, yeah, yeah, it does, actually. Um, so um, next up, we're going to look at the filter function. Now, our filter function takes three arguments. We have um, the array, so the data you want to filter, and then the include argument, which is expected to be an array of Booleans. True if you want to keep the item, false if you don't. So just trues or falses. And then the final one is if it's empty. So if there's nothing returned, what you want the result to be. Okay. So we're going to filter this, and then I'll do some more ex ad advanced examples for some people that at, were at an earlier session of mine. So I'm going to filter the products, or the region. I'm going to filter it where the region is equal to the region in the cell. And you can see I've got Colorado in that cell. And this will just demonstrate to you how arrays are two-dimensional, just by their very nature. So if I hit Enter there, you'll see this spills, and it's spilled in a two-dimensional way. Okay. I had some pre-existing custom, um, some formatting on the side there just to help visualize the sorting that I'm going to do in a second. But the spreadsheet you're looking at is three formulas. Okay, this would have been a world of pain before, and they're three relatively understandable formulas. And as I go and change this drop-down, you'll see that my data is redimensioning. Okay. Now this is great. So I've showed you two two functions. We've seen the filter function. We've seen the unique function, but I'm going to show you the sort function next. So we've got this unique list. It'd be nice if that was alphabetical. So we're just going to wrap that in a sort. So I'm just putting sort around that, and I'm hitting enter. Now I've got that in alphabetical order. 
Now, if we look at my filter, I'd like to do a more advanced sort on this. I want this sorted by revenue, high to low, because I want to be doing some analysis on the high items. So if I go over here, I'm going to wrap that in a sort. And the sort, I'm just going to go to the end. The sort function takes um, four arguments. The second argument is the, the column you want to sort on. So I'm going to sort on the sixth column. And then you say if you want it in ascending or descending order. By default, it's ascending order. So I'm going to switch it to descending order and hit enter. So now I've got that filtered list in as filter, sorted by revenue, high to low. So that's kind of pretty fun. Now, I'm going to show some more advanced techniques here quickly for some people. So you see there we've got this filter. That's, the, that's, what's, that's what we're filtering on. It's this, where the sales region is equal to M6. And if I hit F9 on that, you'll see it's just a bunch of trues and falses, right? It's a very, I've got 400 items in that list, and that's what's getting fed into that filter function. Okay, So what we can do is we can do some um, Boolean math on this. So we can do things like maybe I want to do an OR and I want to be able to filter it to two states. So I'm just going to copy this up here. So now I've got two states and I'm just going to give it a different one, Illinois. And I'm just going to use simple math. So here I have, I'm just going to change my, you can see the include argument. I'm just wrapping this in brackets. And then I'm going to put another one. So I'm going to use plus. Plus is the equivalent of OR in, in uh, mathematically in Excel. So I'm going to do an OR. And I, so I just put it, I've got the bracket. I'm going to do the same thing. So I'm going to say region equals to Illinois, right? So now I've got all the sales from Illinois and Idaho coming through on that list using a simple function. I could switch that to an AND. I could do things based on the size of the sales. I could filter to things greater than 70. So you could just play with a whole bunch of things. You can cut it any which way. Okay. So, huh? And is multiply or is plus. Okay. So if we, so those are some, some nice examples. I'm going to show some of the, the other functions we have. These are more building block functions. So here I have a list of names. Oops. Let me delete some stuff. Uh, I've got a list of names and they've got some employee numbers. And what I want to do is sort the list of names by the employee number. But I only want the list of names returned. I don't care about the employee number. So if I go sort by, that allows me to sort an array by another array. So I'm going to sort the names by the employee numbers and I'm just going to get the names back. So if you take a look at Sam, Sam presumably has the lowest employee number and that's why he's up top. Okay? Pretty simple. Now, we also have a really handy function called RandArray. And this is really handy for people doing things like Monte Carlo analysis. With Monte Carlo analysis, you end up using a lot of random numbers. And it can be very slow. Yeah, so what you can do now is you can, you can actually drive the number of random numbers off a cell. So I'm going to drive it off this cell here. And you'll see if I put the number 5 in here, I get 5 random numbers. If I put the number 10 in there, I get 10 random numbers. If I put the number a million in there, it might get slower. Wait, there, I, had it, I get a million random numbers, right? So one formula, a million things. And you can drive it. And you can build off that. So you can have references to that that end up building and resizing based on that. So it's great for Monte Carlo analysis. So. The last thing I think I was going to show here was a little bit of fun on the... Oh, we've still got some more time. I could sh show some other stuff. Um, so let me go here. Equals um, round array 10. So my 10 random numbers. So let's say we, would ha we had a raffle, a staff raffle, and I wanted to randomize my list of um, employee names um, I, uh, randomly. I just wanted to shuffle the names. So what we can do there is we can use the um, sort by function. So I'm going to say sort by. I'm going to sort the list of names. So I'm saying sort these list of names by what? Well, I'm going to sort them by 10 random numbers. OK? So I'm, I'm giving, I'm just sorting it by random numbers. And that's going to essentially randomize the order of that list. So you'll see every time I hit F9, those names come back in a different order. So you can use that to do, it's useful in Monte Carlo analysis, it's useful in ad hoc stuff. Huh? No, there's no seed. 
I'll give a shout out to is it Sam from is it probability management? They do some work in the space, a lot of Monte Carlo stuff. Um, so that's some some easy stuff. And um, actually, let me show you a few more advanced scenarios on the Rand array, right? So with Rand Array, we initially launched it with only three arguments, or two arguments, and we got feedback from the users that it would be really handy to have a few more. So what we did was we now give you the ability to say, what is the lowest number you want? So I could say give it from 1 to 100, right? And that'll be between 1 and 100. But you also have the option of saying, just give me integers. So now you've got integers between 1 and 100. Um, and that was relatively painful in the past to do. It was just messy. Okay, and if you're someone who uses array formulas, you would have come across a weird construct of having rows. You'd have equals row, and minus another row, and it, you'd use that to generate sequences. Well, we now give you a sequence function, so you can just say say sequence ten, and it'll generate numbers one through ten, right? You can also go and say I'm going to give it sequence eight eight, and this will essentially generate a chessboard. So there's a lot of really cool stuff you can do now, just really simply. And you start thinking about spreadsheets as sets, doing set operations, rather than doing individual operations on values. You just work on information in its groups. So I'm going to move across to my final slide. And then I'll hang around for a bit if anyone has any questions. Um, on the availability for this feature, we're currently, we went out to, um, um, we're in Insiders Fast right now. Um, we're currently testing this across Microsoft. Everyone at Microsoft has it now. And once we're 100% confident, comfortable with stability, we'll be rolling that out. We don't expect it's going to be very long at this point. It was obviously a pretty big change being a low-level calc feature. We needed to make sure that it was rock solid um, because you guys don't have time for broken spreadsheets. So that was, that was the demo. Um, some key advantages, just some key takeaways. Dynamic arrays are more capable. You can have things redimension and size themselves. They're faster to build. A single formula doing big operations. And there's less chance of error. If you're writing less formulas, there's less things for you to break. There's less things for you to review. So you can be more confident in the correctness of your spreadsheets. Okay. And actually, I, I said this was the final slide. I just want to show you one thing. Just to hit home how, how deep this is in our product. So if I go back over here, and I'm just going to scoot things over a little, make some space. If I go and say equals this, right? There's no function involved. That's just a range reference. And if I hit enter, that will spill. So dynamic arrays is in it's deep it's part of the core of excel excel is now an array spreadsheet language at the lowest possible level there's n nothing it's not attached to any of the six functions we're launching every function can, has array behaviors depending on how you call it so that's the session um, I'll be around at the end um, make sure you pop in a bit of a review on that um, we've got uh, we've got a community if you want to join the community, and uh, that's our where the Excel team members will participate and message, and there are MVPs that message on that as well. Um, oh, did everyone get that? I can go back. I saw some photographs. Are we good? And then um, if you could complete your survey, um, that'd be fantastic. So thanks for coming along. I appreciate it. I know they're handing out beers, so. Thank you.